Hello everyone, happy Tuesday. It's time for another episode of Tuesday Live at Five. This is Lena Gersa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And today I am so excited to share with you the beautiful Symbols of Fortune suite from the Stampin' Up! 2022 January to June mini catalog. Now, this suite is one of those where I looked at it in the catalog. I'm like, oh, it's nice, but it's really not for me. It's not something that I have to have. And I kind of carried on my way, merry way. And then, of course, as happens all the time, I saw all sorts of amazing projects made with this suite and of course I had to have it. Who can relate? <laughs> so I, I bought the suite. I didn't have a ton of time to play with it when I first got it but this past weekend I had a really good play session with it and oh my goodness I'm in love with it. The paper is gorgeous. The, um, the images and the stamp set are fantastic. Um, absolutely love it. So I have three projects to share with you today that really showcase the paper and the beautiful images and die cuts in, in this suite. So I'm getting a million notifications and I'm not sure why. Let me see if I can silence notifications and see if that works. All right, we're going to try that because I've got a million things coming across my screen. It's really distracting when I'm talking to you. So um, as I was saying, we are going to be all about the Symbols of Fortune suite. I'm going to show you three projects. We're going to make them together. And then I have a couple more that I'm going to show you some swaps that I received and a couple others that I stamped myself. So lots of inspiration for the Symbols of Fortune suite. So let me pull up my video here on my iPad so I can see who is joining me. All right. We've got Krista and, and who else? Laurel and Doris and Joyce. Hello, ladies. Thanks for joining me today. Um, I'm not sure where you're joining me from, but here in Southern Ontario in Cambridge, it is an absolutely beautiful sunny day. It's cold, <laughs> really cold, um, but it is beautiful to see the sun. So sure is nice to not have rain and snow and miserableness like we've had for the past uh, week or so. All right, so I'm going to flip my camera, enough chit chat, and we're going to get to it. I'm going to show you some of the products in the suite, and we're going to get some stamping, okay? Here we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, I see Gail and Betty have joined us. Oh, last week in Arizona. Enjoy it, Betty. It ain't Arizona warm where we are. <laughs> so enjoy that last week of warmth and sunshine. All right, so Symbols of Fortune is found on page 22 in the January to June mini, okay? And um, it is absolutely beautiful, beautiful suite of products. Um, I'm going to show you the bundle and the ribbon and the DSP and the specialty paper. We're not going to use the polished dots today. I'm going to use some other embellishments, but never fear, there will be bling. Okay, so let me get this out of the way and show you what we're talking about. Okay, so we've got the Crane of Fortune stamp set. Um, beautiful sort of brush stroke, kind of abstract type images. I really gravitate towards those kinds of images. I really like them. Um, they're, they're just, they, they're easy to stamp. They look beautiful. They don't require coloring. They're just really pretty. Um, and then we have some great sentiments that are very different. We don't have very many stamp sets that have, that say good luck. Um, and I love this sending a thousand well wishes on your special day. That could be for anything, right? Birthday, wedding, anniversary. Um, this one would be perfect for weddings or anniversaries, wishing a lifetime of happiness and a world full of love. Uh, it would also be work on a baby card. So really great sentiments in that set. And then of course we have the coordinating dies. So we have several dies that coordinate with stamped images. Okay. And then we have some dies that cut out shapes as well. You're going to see these in action in a little bit. Okay. So that is the bundle. And then we have this gorgeous ribbon. This is the um, soft succulent satin ribbon. It is about a half inch wide. It's a little bit wider than a lot of the ribbons we use. Um, I'm going to show you some ways to use it. It's fairly, um, I don't want to say stiff, but it's got some, some firmness to it. Um, so I would not probably tie it in a bow to use on a card. I'll show you what it looks like tied in a bow. It's still quite lovely, but it's hard to get a small bow with this ribbon. So if you're going to put a bow on a card, it's going to kind of take over your card. Now let me see how small I can make the loops and still have it look balanced. So there we go. Okay. So on a card base, so if I just bring in a card, so that's going to fill up a fair bit of, of real estate on your card, but you certainly could use it if you wanted um, a nice large bow. Um, it would look amazing on gift packaging and whatnot. Beautiful, beautiful ribbon. So that is 
the ribbon in the suite. And then of course we have a fantastic DSP. Uh, this is specialty paper. So it has um, the gold foiling. Every sheet on one side has the beautiful gold. And we've got some awesome images. So this is like Queen Anne's Lace or even Dandelions sort of it looks like a cotton uh, uh, bush to me some fan flowers this is just a fantastic sort of texture we've got some cranes and then um, some more um, what are those called can't remember the name of them right now but then on the back we have gorgeous colors and patterns you're gonna see these in action today um, actually I used four out of the six today um, on my project so beautiful beautiful love this bamboo um, it's like a, it looks like a linen look all of the the pattern DSP has texture it's got like a linen look texture to it so it's really really beautiful and then we have this fantastic mother of pearl specialty paper now I've used this before in videos on various projects it is non porous okay so it has like a, a coating on it that won't allow um, anything to soak into it so if you're gonna stamp on it you need to stamp with stays on okay um, you can color it with stamp and blends any alcohol based ink but our regular classic ink will just smudge off it won't it won't uh, set on this paper okay but it is so beautiful and sparkly so you're gonna see that in action today as well so here we go we're gonna get to it all right yes I agree Laurel they are beautiful papers without the stamps <laughs> yeah yeah, Tracy, I was like, it was again, one of those that I had to, I, it was like, I liked it, but it was just not my style. So I kind of thought, okay, I'm going to keep moving. And then of course I ended up having to buy it. So the first one we're going to do today is this one. I posted this yesterday, um, all about the beautiful DSP. The only stamping on this is the sentiment. Okay. So let me show you how I did that. So we are starting with a three by four inch uh, piece of that beautiful DSP. So this is the one that has the cranes on the back, but I just love this floral image. It's so beautiful and springy. And then I have a piece of soft succulent cardstock that is three and one eighth by four and one eighth. So we're gonna create a nice little mat to put our DSP on, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and layer that. Oh, I love this DSP too, Krista. It really is beautiful. If you only get one thing from the suite, it needs to be the DSP. Seriously, it's so beautiful. All right, so let's pop that on. Now today you're gonna to see me um, using a bunch of products that are on the retiring products list because we have to acknowledge the fact that we are soon going to be without some of our favorite products. <laughs> I am mourning a few and I will mention a couple of them as we go. Um, but I wanted to highlight some of my favorite uh, retiring products just so that uh, if you haven't got them yet, that you know that they are going away very soon, okay? So there is our focal image. We're going to use a little bit of that gorgeous ribbon so we're going to start by just laying some across sort of the, the right side of our DSP panel here. I'm going to cut just enough to wrap around the back side. So I'm going to add a glue dot to either end. So we're going to go to one and two. And I'm going to put this on about hmm, three quarters of an inch in from the right edge. Okay, so I'm just laying it across the front there and wrapping the ends around. Okay, so it's going to look like that. Then I have, well, let's start with this. Let's stamp, stamp our sentiment. So I've got just some white scrap here. And we're going to use our sending a thousand well wishes on your special day. I love the sentiment because it works for pretty much everything and I'm gonna go ahead and stamp this in some evening evergreen ink now my evening evergreen pad is getting a wee bit on the dry side so it may actually end up stamping and looking like um, yeah it almost looks like soft succulent now I have to um, point out see how crooked that stamped it's because I mounted this like so off oh my goodness it probably is the worst stamp I've mounted in years I don't know what I was thinking I think I was dipping into the wine or something when I mounted that one <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and punch out my sentiment. Now, I'm using one of my favorite retiring punches. This is the Everyday Label Punch. It has been around for, I wanna say like four years. It's been around for quite a while. In fact, I have two of them because I use it so much and I um, often would use it in my classes and I would need it, need multiple. So I actually bought a second one. Um, this is one that is a must have label punch. It's a good size. It fits lots of different sentiments and it's a pretty label. Okay, so that's one 
that you are going to want to pick up if you have not already got it. Okay, so there is my label. And then I have a couple of flowers that I fussy cut from the DSP. So let me just show you. It's this sheet here, okay? Now I need to point out these large floral sprays, you're gonna see it on the next card, actually can be cut out with the die. So I can line that up, there we go, and cut that out using the die. So you don't have to fussy cut this large one, which is awesome. Uh, but these little guys, I just hand cut and they are easy, easy, easy to cut. Okay, so I cut two of them. I actually cut one from the edge of the DSP because it's gonna get hidden, right? I'm just gonna hide that back here and no one's ever gonna know, right? So we're gonna go ahead and glue those to the back of our, let me think about what I'm doing here, to the back of our label. Oh, of course I put it on the opposite corners. <laughs> We're gonna have lots of seal on the back of this one. All right, so we're gonna pop this guy on here, like that. And then my other one is gonna go down here, like that. Okay, so there are my flowers. And then I have one of these gorgeous, um, I call these fan flowers, I'm not sure what the actual name, I'm sure they have a name, um, I don't know. I'm making, making stuff up. So this is cut from another one of my favorite retiring products and that is the In Color Shimmer Vellum. Now I've used this a ton and um, it coordinates with our, our current in colors, the ones that are carrying over till next year. Okay, not the ones that are retiring, but this Shimmer Vellum is not in the new catalog. So if you haven't got this and you have the In Color ink pads and the In Color um, blends and whatnot, you probably wanna pick this up because it's so pretty and it's like magically shimmery. So I took and die cut one of those beautiful dies out of the um, soft succulent uh, shimmer vellum. So then I'm going to take and I'm going to trim this and you're going to see I'm going to get like three different pieces that I can use on my project. So you can do it, use it as a whole or by cutting it up, you actually get a whole lot more mileage out of it. So I'm going to add one down here and I'm going to add one over here. And maybe I'll add another one. Whoops. Believe it or not, in all of that seal that I put down, I don't have enough. <laughs> Things are falling off. All right, let's pop this guy on here. And we're going to add another one over here. Just like that. Okay, so there is our sentiment. So all about the DSP and the die cuts. So, so easy. Now, if you look on my sample, I've got this little sort of um, dovetail bit on my ribbon. So all I'm going to do is take and cut, I don't know, three inches. And I'm going to create that dovetail on each end. So by do, to do that, I'm just going to fold my ribbon in half. My fold is at the top. And I'm just going to cut at an angle on both ends. So there's one and two, okay? And then I wanna fold these. I don't want them to be perfectly the same length. I'm gonna make one a little bit longer than the other. It doesn't really matter which. So I'm gonna put a glue dot on sort of the middle-ish of this ribbon. And then I'm just gonna fold it over, okay? And stick it to itself like that. And then that is going to get glued to the back of my label so that when I glue it on, it's going to be centered over my ribbon, okay? So again, I'm gonna add another glue dot. And then this is going to go on pretty much centered on my label, just like that. And then that is going to go on like that. But first we're gonna glue this onto some gorgeous embossed cardstock. So this is just crumb cake cardstock and it is embossed with the pretty flowers um, embossing folding. Now this one is not retiring. Okay, that's a good thing. Very happy about that because it's a beautiful folder. Um, so we're going to go ahead and glue that onto our card base. Our card base is soft succulent cardstock, uh, five and a half by eight and a half inches, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So we'll go ahead and fold that in half along our score line. And then we're going to add our beautiful. Now, this is where I always have a dilemma. Both sides of this are gorgeous. <laughs> okay, so this is the embossed where the image is raised. Okay, but when I flip it over, we get a debossed image, which is just as pretty. So on my sample, I use the embossed image. I think on this one, I'm gonna use the debossed just because I can and because they're pretty. So we're gonna add a little bit of seal to the back of our embossed layer. I should have mentioned this is cut to four by five and a quarter. Okay, this um, crumb cake piece. 
So that's going to go on there like that. And then we're going to go ahead and add our DSP focal image with some dimensionals, of course. I know you're probably getting nervous. I hadn't popped anything up yet. So we're going to add that. We'll get rid of our backings. And then pop this on. Centered, hopefully. And hopefully straight onto our card base. Okay, now this is going to get popped up, centered over our ribbon. So we want to be paying attention to that um, little notched ribbon at the bottom and make sure it is centered over our ribbon. Okay, so we're going to again add, I just need to think about where this is going to go and where I need my dimensionals. Okay, so we need one here, and here. There we go. So we'll get rid of these. And we're going to pop this on. And again, I want it to be centered and straight. It's a lot to ask sometimes, I know. <laughs> okay, so there is, that's basically it. We're going to add a little bit of bling. So this time I'm using up another item that is retiring. Um, I have used these a ton. These are the in color gems. Um, again, they coordinate with the same set of in colors as the shimmer vellum, okay? But again, these are not in the new catalog and I love them. So. I'm highlighting them just in case you want to pick some up before they go away forever. So I'm just going to add a couple of these guys to the front of my card. And that's that. Now on the inside, I'll just quick show you what I did. Um, I added a, a basic white layer. I stamped another sentiment from the stamp set and then um, a flower and some of the bamboo leaves. Okay, but so, so pretty and simple. That is number one. Hope you like that one. Clean up my mess here. Next one is the one I posted earlier today. So ginkgo, thank you, Tracy. That is what I was trying to think of. It is ginkgo. They're ginkgo leaves. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so next one we're doing is this one. I posted this earlier today. I love the softness of this crane image. I love that it's a little bit abstract. It's not super crisp. It just makes for such a soft and beautiful look when it is stamped in, in light colors. Okay, so we're gonna make this one. I've already stamped and die cut the crane just in the interest of time. But to start, we're gonna do a little bit of stamping on our label. So this is cut using the seasonal labels dies. It is another one that is carrying over, hallelujah, because I, there are so many label dies that are retiring. If these had gone too, I don't know what I would have done. <laughs> I might've had to end it all, maybe not. Anyway, I'm going to ink up my beautiful floral stamp and I'm kind of using it as greenery this time behind my um, crane. So I'm going to stamp this kind of around the edge of my label here. I'm going to leave sort of the left side blank. I want some white space, but I wanted a little bit of greenery to kind of anchor my um, arrangement behind my crane. Okay, so there it is. So then what I'm going to do is take a piece of smoky slate cardstock and I have embossed this one with the painted texture embossing folder. Now that this is another one that is staying. We're happy about that because again, there's so many awesome folders leaving. Um, this one is just a, a great one for um, adding just a little bit of texture to your background. Okay, so we are going to glue our stamped label onto our smoky slate layer. Now this is cut again to four by five and a quarter. I'm not being very good about remembering to me mention measurements today. All right, so we're going to pop this on. And I'm going to do it pretty much centered. I'm going to do it just a teeny bit to the left, just so that I have a little bit more room to get my crane and all of my arrangements, all my greenery and whatnot on there. Okay, but there is my panel. Now comes the fun part. We get to do a whole bunch of arranging. So here is my crane. And then I have all sorts of magical bits. So here is that ginkgo die cut, um, cut in gold foil. And then here is that same die cut, cut in that magical mother of pearl specialty paper. So we're actually going to use um, the gold one. On my sample, I did it like all in one piece, but what I ended up finding is that my crane covered most of it and I didn't like that. So I'm actually gonna switch this up a little bit. I'm gonna cut it kind of in the middle and I'm gonna actually glue this part a little bit lower and then this part up to the top so that I have a little bit more gold showing. I didn't like that I didn't have enough gold down here. So we're gonna start by doing that. We're gonna add a little bit of seal, top and bottom. And we're going to add this 
and then this one like this. So this little stem I kind of tucked behind uh, the crane's leg. Okay, I just didn't like seeing that stem. Now I've got a few little bits here that I didn't quite pop out when I was die cutting. So we'll get rid of those. There we go. Okay, then I have some of these branches. I guess they're bamboo sprigs. Uh, they're cut from soft succulent cardstock. So I'm going to add a little bit more seal sort of around my crane here. And we're just going to kind of arrange these. So we're going to add one here. And then one kind of coming down the bottom. And I've got one more. It's going to go kind of over here. Okay, now you could totally stop at any point with these. I, it, this was one of those ones where I just couldn't stop adding stuff. Um, but you totally, like it's quite pretty just like that. But then I wanted a pop of color. So I added, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh man. Too much talking the last couple of days. Okay, um, so I die cut some of these um, smaller ginkgo leaves with uh, the Fresh Freesia Shimmer Vellum. Okay, so we're gonna add a little bit of that. Again, to add just a little pop of color in behind our crane. So we'll put one there. We're gonna add a little one kind of down here. And whoopsie, see, again, I need more seal. Let's pop that on. Right there, stick, there we go. And then one more. I think this one I might actually kind of put behind instead of up top. I kind of want those gold ones to sort of steal a show there. All right, and then we're gonna add just a little bit of white. I don't think I'm gonna use all three of these leaves this time. Again, I felt like it was a little bit much on my side. You know how you make something and you go, yeah, I should have quit while I was at it. <laughs> so we're gonna fix that this time. So we're gonna add a little bit of white um, just in behind the gold at the top. So we're gonna add a little bit of seal there. And we're just going to add that in behind like that. Okay. Now our crane is going to go on the front of our card. Okay. And it's going to go, it's going to extend off the edge of our label. All right. Just like that. So we're going to add some dimensionals and you're going to want dimensionals both on the crane and on your leaves and such. Okay. Um, remember, we just kind of tack these into place with the seal so it's not super secured so we want to make sure that we add some dimensionals just to make sure this is well secured and they're not going to fall off oh we're going to put one on the crane's head too okay so let's get rid of all our backings yeah they really are pretty krista i agree they're so pretty so let's get rid of all of our backings here and we're going to pop that on so we want our crane to you know be anchored on the label, okay? Um, and you'll find that if you have it extending off the edge just a little bit, it gives it just a little bit more motion. Now his feet are kind of flopping, so what I like to do is I take my mini dimensionals, I cut them in half, and then I use my take your pick, and I tuck some half mini dimensionals under his feet. Okay, and that will secure them and it's easier to do once the the image is stuck down It's easier to figure out where to put them um, And to maneuver it. So again, this is going to just tuck in here And that way we can make sure they're not visible All right, so there is our beautiful crane So that is going to get mounted onto a thick basic white cardstock base uh, Five and a half by eight and a half again scored in the middle at four and a quarter so we'll fold that in half along our score line. And then we're gonna pop this on with a little bit of seal. You just wanna go slow with your seal if you're dealing with embossed cardstock, okay? Um, it has been known to peel back the um, cardstock when it's embossed, because it's weakened, right? So you just wanna be careful. All right, so there is my beautiful crane. Now we are going to stamp our sentiment. So for this one, I'm using the uh, Much Luck and Good Fortune sentiment. I'm gonna use my Evening Evergreen ink again. Oh, hi, Yvonne. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'm so glad you enjoy my videos. Thank you for your kind words. That's so, that makes me feel good. I am a teacher, that is my day job. And, um, I, so I, I really have a hard time just doing something without explaining what I'm doing. So 
<laughs> Some people may find that annoying because I'm, you know, yipping and yapping, but that's just the way I am. Uh, now, this punch is the Label Me Fancy Punch. Good news, it's staying, I think, actually. Is it? Now that I'm saying that, I don't remember seeing it in the new in the new catalog. It may be going. I'm going to have to double check that one. Um, so this one is a great one because um, it's narrow. It's not a huge, um, huge bit of real estate. But what it also does, is it'll punch a hole if you wanted to put, um, like do a hole punch, or you can also create a slot for ribbon. Okay, so it's a great punch. And, oh, I did that pretty crooked. Oh, well, we can live with it. Now, we're going to add just a little bit of the bamboo leaves at the bottom. I'm going to use that same Evening Evergreen ink, but I'm going to stamp off. Stamping off just simply means we're going to ink our stamp and then stamp once on some scrap or some grid paper just to get a lighter shade. And that way, it kind of disappears behind my sentiment. Okay, if I had done it full strength, it would kind of interfere with reading the sentiment. All right, so we're going to add a couple of dimensionals to the back of our label here. Oh, it's saying, thank you, Laurel. <laughs> that makes me happy. Thanks for checking that. All right, so we're going to tuck this in. I'm going to have my leaves here overlapping a little bit. So one element of card design, if you are trying to create a cohesive looking design, um, one tip is to have all of your elements touching each other. Rather than having a whole bunch of different elements sort of in different spots on your card, it'll pull your whole design together if they're all sort of touching at least a little bit, okay? All right, last thing we're going to do is add some gold gilded gems. Now these are going, makes me sad because I love these, I use them all the time. And um, so these are just beautiful, shiny um, gold gems. And we're gonna add a couple of these to our card where are we gonna put, put this guy back here just like that okay now on the inside of this one I stamped some more of the flower in the green so it just kind of looks like greenery and then stamped another sentiment okay so that is number two done and done and then the last one is all about the DSP so here is our last card I use three different patterns of DSP on one card. I don't often do that, but this DSP is so beautiful and layers so perfectly, I couldn't resist. So this is our last one. So I'm gonna show you what I did here. So to start, I have a piece of this pattern. So this is sort of a soft, almost looks like brush strokes. It's got that on the back, but I just love this soft pink um, look. So what I did is I actually embossed it using the Tasteful Textile Embossing Folder. Now that one is going. <laughs> And I'm so sad because I use that folder all the time just to add subtle texture. Um, it looks beautiful when you emboss DSP. It just adds an extra little, little something, something. Let me show you the plain DSP and then show it to you with the embossing. Can you see the difference? See how this just adds so much more depth and texture? This is beautiful, but this is beautiful or Okay, and I know that's not a word. I am not that bad a teacher. I don't actually teach English, but there you go. All right, so this piece is cut to four by five and a quarter. Okay, and then I have an evening evergreen piece of cardstock that is four and one eighth by five and three eighths. Okay, so that is going to get layered. You're going to have a narrow 16th of an inch border all the way around. So again, I'm going to go slow with my seal so that I don't rip my paper. And we're gonna center that, and again, it's gonna be a narrow little border all the way around, but that green just pops behind the pink. I love that combo, okay? All right, next up, what did I do with my ribbon? I don't think I brought it over. I put it away, silly me. All right, so this is beautiful ribbon that is in the mini catalog as well. It's actually part of the flowering field suite, the one with the tulips. Um, it is white and evening evergreen, but it is beautiful. It is soft. It ties beautiful bows. So we are going to put this on, I don't know, about, what is it? Two inches up from the bottom, inch and a half, inch and three quarters ish. Okay, so I'm going to add a glue dot to either end. One and two, and then that's gonna go on right 
talking about there. Um, so another design tip is to work in thirds, okay? So if you think about dividing this um, card front into thirds, so there's two thirds, one third, right? Rather than putting this right smack in the middle and dividing it in half visually, um, we like to see thirds, okay? So that's just another little tip when you are designing your own projects, all right? So there is our ribbon. Then I have a piece of this beautiful um, crane pattern. So this is the clouds. Again, let me show you the full, well, the six by six sheet. This is actually, I should mention, this is 12 by 12 DSP. Okay, the sheets that I showed you were six by six just because they were left over from a paper share. I've used so much of this DSP, I don't have a full pack left. So this is what the um, pattern looks like and I've die cut it using another retiring die set that I love, um, the Stitch So Sweetly dies. So these have these beautiful scallop rectangles and they're stitched, okay? They also have some awesome labels. <sighs> another of my favorites going away. So that is going to get glued on there, okay? Now before we do that, we are going to add a little bit of greenery or a little bit of the flowers up here. So this again is cut from the edge of the DSP. So you know when you get a piece and you have partial images, don't waste those, okay? You can still use them. Uh, you just have to be a little bit strategic about how you do it. So this is gonna go on right about here. So I'm actually going to, let me just grab my trimmer here for a sec. I'm going to cut this at a right angle. So I'm going to put this in. Let me do it this way. I'm going to cut it right about here. There we go. Now we have a nice little corner that we can glue into the corner of our DSP, just like that. Okay. So let's add that first. We'll put a little bit of glue on there. And we're going to pop that right up in the corner. And it looks like it was meant to be that way. You'll never, nobody ever, will ever know that it's like a little scrap from the corner of the DSP. Okay, so then this is going to go on in the center. So we'll add a little bit of seal here. Oh, thanks, Joyce. I am a, I'm cheap when it comes to ribbon. I don't like wrapping ribbon around the back where nobody sees it. So I always cut it down. It's also much easier to tie a bow uh, when it's not stuck flat. So... Um, that's kind of my reason for doing it the way I do it. Um, cheap and easy. <laughs> so there you go. But that's my reason. Okay. So this now is ready to glue onto our card base. So I have another soft succulent card base, but this time it's, um, a, a portrait orientation. So it's four and a quarter by 11 inches scored in the middle at five and a half. So we'll fold that in half and crisp it up. And then that is going to get layered just like that. Okay, so we'll add again a little bit of adhesive. I can go a little bit faster with my seal because this is not embossed. And we're gonna pop this on. And again, we're gonna have that little 16th of an inch of the soft succulent showing, okay? All right, now I have this gorgeous floral image that I die cut from the DSP. It's gonna go on right about there. But then I also have some more of that beautiful ginkgo um, cut from the Evening Evergreen Shimmer Vellum. All right, so just like I did earlier, I'm gonna trim off the leaves. So I kind of have three sets of leaves and that gives me a little bit more flexibility. And I'm going, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put this on and pop it up and then we're gonna tuck these in underneath and around. Okay, so let's add a couple of dimensionals here. Another sheet bites the dust. I tend to use just a few dimensionals. I go through a few sheets a week. <laughs> I'm a little addicted. If you're new here, you'll get used to it. Okay, so we're gonna put this on, just sort of overlapping the bottom corner of our um, scalloped rectangle there, okay? And then I'm gonna arrange my little ginkgo leaves here. So this guy is gonna kinda go up the top here. I'm just gonna add a couple of glue dots to the back of my shimmer vellum. I'm using glue dots, not liquid glue, because there are um, little slits that are cut in the image. I'll hold it up first in a sec so you can see what I'm talking about. So just see these little cuts in the image and what that will cause if I use liquid glue is it's gonna cause the glue to ooze a little bit and I don't wanna have a sticky mess. So the glue dots are the perfect solution for that. And then we're gonna add another little set of leaves here. It's going to be kind of tucking out this way. So I'm just going to add one glue dot. Um, these little bits of die cut weigh basically nothing. So we don't need tons of glue. 
to hold them down. So we're going to tuck them. Oh, come on. Work with me. There we go. And tuck that guy in there. And then this one is going to be tucked under the bottom here. So again, one more glue dot. And I'm going to pop that in under here. So I'm just going to lift that up a little bit so that I can stick that down. Okay. Now we're going to stamp our sentiments. So this is just a three quarter by what? Three quarter by four inch strip of basic white. And I'm going to use this uh, sentiment from the set, wishing a lifetime of happiness and a world full of love. And that will work for anniversaries, weddings. This make a beautiful wedding card. So we're going to ink that up. Again, I'm using Evening Evergreen. Not a ton of different colors of ink today. It's just soft succulent and Evening Evergreen. So we're going to stamp that. And then we need to have a moment of silence for the loss of my beloved Taylor Tag Punch. This is the punch that has served me so well. <laughs> For years and it is retiring I'm so so sad I love this punch not uh, the shape of the label is great but I use it all of the time for punching my banner ends just like that so I'm gonna have to find another punch that will work for that purpose I'm so I don't want to have to cut them by hand nobody cuts their banner ends by hand right <laughs> so I'm just so bummed anyway I'll get over it, I'm sure. I'll forget all about it when the new catalog goes live. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and layer that onto our card. I'm gonna put a dimensional on this end where it extends over, and then this end I'm gonna put a bit of tape. So we're gonna flip that over. I'm gonna use a little piece of a dimensional because I don't have any more right here. And then a little bit of tape here. I know, Deb. Like, honestly, like, what are they thinking? Do they not understand our needs? <laughs> it is the perfect punch. Like, it, it's so great for doing banners of all shapes and sizes. It's fantastic. Anyway, we have to let it go. We have to move on. <laughs> but I'm going to need a few weeks to, to get used to that idea. All right, so we're going to tie a bow with this beautiful ribbon. So we're going to pinch, make our bunny ears. Okay, cross left bunny ear over the right. Bring it around and through. Okay, and then this is the part that people often kind of go, oh, well, I can't make bows because when I pulled it through, it looked terrible. It will always look terrible. So you want to play with it and tease the bow out of the ribbon. Okay, it will not look good when you first tie it. You have to work at it a little bit. And then I'm going to notch my ends again. A little dovetail action on my bow. So again, the easiest way to get this and have it be even is to just fold your ribbon in half uh, rather than trying to cut each side. That one's a little long, so I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter. There we go. And then that is going to tuck in. There's a beautiful little space here for the loop of my bow. It's like stamping up plan knot. Um, so we are going to add a glue dot to the knot of our bow. And then that is going to get glued. It's just going to nestle right in there absolutely perfectly. Okay. And then we're going to add a couple more of these fabulous gems. So again, I am, these are ones, well, there's a lot of things I'm going to miss. <laughs> You're probably thinking like, oh my goodness, like how is she going to function? Everything she likes is going away. Well, let me tell you, the new catalog, some pretty darn awesome things that I'm pretty sure I'm going to fall in love with in a pretty big hurry. So I can mourn for a couple of weeks and then I'll be very excited once my new stuff comes. <laughs> All right, that is it for our projects today. Now I'll just quick show you on the inside of this one. Often when we cut um, card fronts from DSP, we end up with little scraps left. Don't throw them out. They're a great way to decorate the inside of your card and just sort of tie it to what you did on the front. Okay, so this is just three quarters of by four and I glued it just on a basic white layer and it just ties it together really nicely. It makes the inside look finished. All right, so there is one, two, and three cards that we made today. Now I've got a couple other samples to share with you before we go. So here is another one that I did. I was wanting to do one that would really feature the stamps. So this one is super simple. So I just um, did a little bit of blending to start. I used my blending brushes with some soft succulent ink and did a little bit of blending to start. So I kind of have this soft pale green background. This is just on white cardstock. And then I stamped the floral image, this one here, in gorgeous grape. 
and the bamboo shoot in the Evening Evergreen. I did some full strength and some stamped off. And I just love the, the beautiful background that that creates. And then just a quick um, sentiment. This is a die cut with another retiring product. The one that I'm, besides the Taylor Tag Punch, the one that I'm gonna miss the most is the Tasteful Labels dies. I use them every single week in my videos. They, I don't know how I'm gonna function without them, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> there better be some really good labels coming in the new catalog. Um, so again, stamp the sentiment, die cut it using the tasteful labels dies, a little bit of ginkgo, and one of the cute little honeybee trinkets that are also retiring. Um, so you'll want to snag a little uh, a container of those as well. They're just so cute. Okay, and then on the inside again, I just did just the bottom half of my white panel for the inside. But so simple and so pretty. And then here are a couple of swap cards I received. These, this is kind of what got me going on wanting this, this suite. So I just love this one. So the, this person took this pattern and using the Hippo Happiness dies, which are also retiring. <laughs> are you noticing a theme here? Um, cut out the crane image here. Okay, and used it as a focal image. What a smart, smart idea. The background is stamped using the floral, and of course there's a little bit of Winkastella on there. And again, there's our beautiful, soon to be gone, tasteful textile folder. All right, and then this one I absolutely love. I love the layering on this one. There's just, oh, love everything about this. So again, stamped background, um, some of that beautiful uh, bamboo DSP. We've got a tag. There's some of the pearlescent, or mother of pearl paper, our crane. Love, love, love. All right, so there are lots of ideas using this beautiful suite. And uh, I hope you enjoy uh, or enjoyed my video this week. And I will see you again next week for another episode of Tuesday Live at 5. Bye for now.